say about these guys? Their antenna? Like how old are they compared to like, when we saw the, the caterpillars, one, how old are they compared to the caterpillars? Well, in general adult moths live a lot shorter lives than their larval mm -hmm. stages. So they'll be a larvae for three weeks, maybe a little bit more depending on the temperatures in the growing season. Um, that can vary a lot by place too. In the tropics, caterpillars will sometimes grow a lot slower because they don't need to worry about the constraints of season. But mm -hmm. up in Alaska, for example, the butterflies and moths have to go through pretty quickly. But in general, um, larvae, uh, and in, an insect like this will be a larvae for much longer than it is a reproductive adult. So when it changes into this flying critter, it's really, its only point is to mate and lay Legs. eggs. So some don't even uh, feed. Luna moths, which are a pretty well-known example of a big colorful green moth they actually have no mouth feeding parts. ability yeah they have really no parts. so no, they really no are just a, huh. they live long enough to reproduce um and lay eggs and that's examples about it. of caddisflies that are similar to that yep caddisflies mayflies, mayflies we have a mayfly up here about. here's a mayfly that's it's gonna awesome. be really hard to yeah. see it but um these long tail prongs these are the ephemeropterans, so it's kind of cool that the name is also another key to life history. They're very ephemeral. As adults, they'll only live, some only live a day, some live a few more than that, but they don't feed. They really just reproduce as these beautiful, they're really elegant critters too. I mean, it's kind of stuck to my finger by my wings, but they're really, really gorgeous if you look up close. They have a lot of, they have really long antenna and really long prongs on their tails. And it's a chillier night, so we're lucky we got them in, and that's mm -hmm. why they're kind of... They might be here tomorrow morning, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very likely. And the wing vibrating without really flying is, a, is kind of their version of shivering. So it's how they can get mm, their body temp up to flying ability. And these guys are just deciding to not really worry about it. I'm giving off quite a bit of heat through my hands at this point. Oh, so that's why they like it? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm like, just, oh, yeah, I'm just heat. kidding. <laughs> but. Oh, look, these are nice. The, G the geo on your pants is nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so what else? So what else can we say about these guys? Is this another geo right here? Are they usually active at night? Or are they just act they're usually just not active and they see the light and they're coming on over? Well, they're moths. Oh, they're trying to the heat. Um, kind of. Um, these are night active species. To find day active species of moths, of which there are many, um, you have to go out collecting during the day. Uh -huh. So there are some species of this family that have totally clear wings. Um, and they fly just like hummingbirds and they fly during the day. Mm -hmm. And nectar on flowers just like hummingbirds and zoom around. And they're also sphingids. Um, they're really beautiful. This is not a moth. It's a caddisfly on my finger that just threw down again. And it, um, its larvae are the guys that make little um, tubes out of stones and uh, twigs. They make and tubes out of twigs and stones? They glue them together into a makeshift shell. Do they and then use they a foreign substance, of like their own saliva? Or they use their own saliva. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. and, uh, and then they live inside as a larvae. Yeah, they're aquatic and they hatch out into this winged adult, which is the reproductive stage. And um, people actually sometimes put these guys, these larvae, in an aquarium with beads or with um, precious stones, and then they make their shell out of um, this tube, out of whatever is available. Oh. And then when they hatch, you can use that case that they've made as a bead, or it's kind of fun. There are a couple wow. of little cottage industries in that. I'm sure, they aren't big buck makers, but it's still pretty, pretty, pretty nifty. And what, uh, what species is this you're holding? Uh well, this is from the family of the same one. This is both sphinx moths. Sphinx. So sphingid. So I think they're just the most common around here? The most attracted to the light at this time? or uh, I don't think they're the most common. I think they're the most... Uh, I want to say beautiful, but enigmatic. Right? These are the ones that you recognize. They're kind of like... Everybody, when the girls were out here last week, this is like the... One that everybody was really uh, the one you want to hold and cuddle with. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, "Wow, so beautiful!" All right, and these are obviously two different species of the same family. All right. So both of these are sphingids. So are these uh, are they uh, sexable? They like. Can you tell which which sex is which, and how do you yeah, do that? Usually, so for instance, if you look at the one that Mariah has right now. 
Right? I mean, there's different ways to say, but the way I would tell right away, is if I'm looking at the antenna. Uh huh. Right. The shape, color, size. All three. I'd say the shape and the, the size of it. Males tend to have to use. Females exert pheromones, uh -huh. and the males have to locate those pheromones. And these pheromones are like a lock and key that are only that they recognize with their antenna. Right. So. So how do they look different? Uh, let's see. Well, this one looks like yellowish yellow. Often the males have feathery antenna. Exactly. Um, More surface area. Exactly for the pheromones. Mm -hmm. This one, the female put her antenna behind her. Oh, yeah. oh, there it is. They have. So, so it might be two males.